we had a visit from Mr. Arnett in London Holland. He had journey all the way down to see about quilts. When he took on the burden, nobody else could take on. Started taking an interest in this because being in Birmingham was just like I was invisible. There's something here that's gonna change the whole universe. And Alabama really is the center. So I give Mr. Arnett a name, Old Trailblazer. He been whooped good through Birmingham every which way he go, but the thing about it, he was working for a cause that had to be given to the world so it could open the world up to love. You know, we know each other. I'm gonna tell you, thank God for you. Thank God for you. You sacrificed a lot, and not only did you sacrifice, you gave all of your heart and soul into what you was into. A journey that had been completed with all love. All of my ancestors here were 100,000 of them Thank you, Mr. Arnick. So this is a story of what you would call like love and appreciation. And all of me is a cry in the wilderness. Let my people go. Now, what it is is now, how do you extend an olive branch to the world? Well, I felt an urge in aiding that to give a story, which is the truth and the conclusion of a journey of a people. Now, I started off with asking God permission because you got to ask for a vision to be able to complete a vision. You got to be able to endure. We are amongst 100,000 ancestors here. Yeah, my thoughts and feelings is coming through them to be able to express myself in a way where the voice itself can be a tool to be understood by all. To be able to explain a dot in time. That's what history is. A dot in time. God have guided you here, and no mistake, when you come up that hill, you're already entering because of all these ancestors that's here. And that touch, it take the touch. Let them feel the wantness of that soul. Get to the last great, great grandma, and she take that baby, she hold him up. Is this the one? And I ain't know nothing but my grandmama. She would say this. The first should be last, and the last should be for Thank you, Grandmama. I seen it with my own eyes. As I travel through what you will see this journey here, we got to turn our heart to each other. Time for us to unite. Because God give us only one oof. We got to come together. And we are a gathering group of human beings. While we run away, we should form up together, be able to understand that a heart to heart means so. So, hey, God been with you. Thank you. Job. You're looking at two Job right here. <laughs> and I'm talking, yeah, it ain't been no have, easy path. I don't path. have patience, Joe. You made that dough. And it ain't no big dough. It's a crack in the dough. We remember all the great civilizations by their art. <laughs> Joe and Thornton Dial and Lonnie Holly, these are three of the greatest artists in America's produced. And uh, those three artists, I would put up against any three artists in America, put up easily. Alabama is America's Tuscany. One day, average American can name as many artists from this county, Birmingham area, as from Florence. And I think I'll stick to that. In fact, I get accused of hyperbole. Clearly, it's not hyperbole. If I say this black culture centered in Alabama, but all over the South, will be seen as a culture that produced the greatest art in American history, and that turns out to be true. It's not hyperbole. It sounded hyperbole 20 years ago. It doesn't anymore. And, and the real reason that Alabama is the center of that is that this whole cultural phenomenon, which grew out of slavery, and black people obviously weren't allowed to have a voice, they created a language that was theirs, and it was private, and it consisted of, among many other things, art and music which are the two things that we judge civilizations by. They've created what is turning out to be the most popular music in the history of planet Earth. There are all these things that comprise a culture. Where's the art? Where's the greatness? And so I started looking for it. And very shortly after I started looking, I found Lonnie Holly, which was the ultimate proof. He was this great artist living up in the woods, and people made fun of him, and nobody respected him. He's a junk sculptor. If he's white, he made... Objet trouvé, assemblage. <laughs> this is a perception thing. Lonnie was the wrong color to make such sophisticated found object sculptures. But Lonnie was the, was the catalyst, really. The evidence was right there that Birmingham is where we should be looking. The one thing in cultures and civilizations that marks a, a change 
really a, a leap forward. It's when two civilizations meet, they both leave with new ideas and the art changes. The Birmingham area had this great industry that was starting up, ore mines and coal mines and steel industry and jobs. And it was that combination and the art just exploded and they also had access to materials, iron and steel and tin. And so I came looking and we found Lonnie. And then shortly thereafter, Thornton Dial, not too long after that, Joe Minter, and there's like the package. I mean, people think I'm a hustler. I'm a bad hustler because I haven't made any money from it. However, I didn't do it for that reason. It's just gather the evidence. Let's give us 30,000 square feet to put Lonnie, Joe, and Thornton Dial, and then give somebody else 30,000 feet to put whoever you want. You know, I don't want to make the kind of statements I get in trouble for, so I'm not saying he's the greatest sculptor that ever lived, but I am saying that he's one of America's greatest sculptors, and if you don't believe it, well, we're going to do a book on his work so you can see a couple of hundred of them and right. decide for yourself. Look at the place. I mean, just in this yard, enormous amount of major works of art, but they mean something. It wasn't made for the commercial market. It's not made for that at all. So when you look, you say, well, what was all that put out there like that? Well, it's a lot that have been thrown away, and now it's time to recycle. This that you see was used by what you would call throw it outside the road, Salvation Army, outlets, flea markets. So the material that I work with is not what could, I could have produced. So this is part of a miracle, you see. I asked him, well, do you sell any pieces? And he said, well, I don't know. I don't really want to sell them, but nobody wants to buy them anyway. If they look at it, now it's just junk, you know. <laughs> Put it in a museum, it didn't jump. A major piece is going in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Habitually, they don't collect junk. If you break each word down, A-R-T-S, and what it means, A would be for abstract. R would be for rhythm. T would be for thought as statement. Everybody lies. I asked God to give me a way to tell a story and when I asked God, asked for the vision. Joe was saying he went to, he heard they're gonna build a civil rights museum in Birmingham. I asked him why'd he do this, and he said, I heard they're gonna build a civil rights museum in Birmingham, and I knew they would honor the leaders, but not the foot soldiers. I'm gonna create a place that honors the foot soldiers, and uh, did it better than I've ever seen it done. So all we got to say is this, we paid the price. I'm talking in general for you to answer these within your heart so you can understand it. You got to find everything that I see within your heart so you can bring to your conscience a clearness of what really truth is. Do we love one another? It's such a short word. It's so hard to get there though. It takes love from the bottom of your heart to be able to say, I love everybody. We in this thing together. It's got to be face to face, heart to heart, feet to feet. Eyeball to eyeball. That pledge of allegiance I said back there meant something to me. I have traveled 71 years through this. And when I always remember that pledge and that golden rule, how do you feel about a tree? A tree? A tree. How do you feel about a tree? To me, it's sacred. And you know, we have lived with trees ever since we've been here. We've made contact with trees every second just about. Man at first didn't know what power was, so he had to invent a power. A tree obeyed a man when he walked to him with a, what you call an axe or a chain, so he by that. Now, the reason the tree was put in was for real to bear fruit. And to me, a tree is so sacred. I got that respect. Thank God for my teacher. Thank God for teaching us the character that she had wrote on that board, character development. Lord, thank you for giving me enough strength to be able to look in the mirror and see what he really is. And thank you for Mr. Bill on that. Thank you for all that he have done. And I'm throwing flowers at you. Don't let them hit you in the face. <laughs> but thank you. I hate to say it with it. That age catching up with you then. Uh, caught up with me. I'm already gone. I'm already dragged down the railroad track. How come they didn't tell me to wear pretty colors like you wear? <laughs> <laughs>